We estimated creatinine clearance, we looked at the mechanism of action and toxicodynamic properties of aminoglycosides. Now, the next learning objective is describe the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics of aminoglycosides. Let's review what pharmacokinetics means. Traditionally, pharmacokinetics is known as what the body does to the drug. It basically involves ADME, absorption, distribution, metabolism, and elimination. It's important to consider absorption so we know the bioavailability of drugs. When it comes to distribution, it's important to know protein binding. So for example, some patients may have low albumin. Albumin is the number one protein that binds antibiotics. When it comes to metabolism, it is important to know if the, specifically a drug is metabolized with the CYP enzyme. That could include drug interactions. And of course, when it comes to elimination, it's uh, important to consider renal uh, biliary and fecal clearance. Now when we say clinical pharmacokinetics, we basically mean application of these pharmacokinetic principles to safe and effective therapeutic management of drugs in individual patients. And the goal is enhancing efficacy while decreasing toxicity. What about pharmacodynamics? Pharmacodynamics is actually what the drug does to the body. In the case of antimicrobials, the body refers to the pathogen. So we don't really want the drug to do anything to the human body. So once a drug is given to a patient, the body will handle the drugs. So there will be absorption, distribution, and elimination. So this is the pharmacokinetic uh, properties. And then there will be concentration in the body fluids and also at the site of infection. And then at the site of infection is when you want the drug to do something to the pathogens. And that will be the... Uh, pharmacodynamic outcomes, which we refer to as PKPD. And of course, there are things that antibiotics do to the body, and those are referred to as toxicodynamics. These are the things that we don't really want antibiotics to do to the body. Here are some important parameters to know. On the horizontal axis, we're looking at time, and on the vertical axis, we're looking at concentration of drug. So once a drug is given, at uh, the end of infusion, you get the maximum concentration, and that's referred to as peak or Cmax. And then once we start the inf stop the infusion, the body starts to clear it. So the concentration goes down until it's time for the next dose. At that time, we have the minimum concentration or trough, also referred to as C-men. And then the next dose is given and the drug goes up. And then uh, at the end of infusion, the body starts to clear. There's also the concept of area under the curve, which is all the shaded area here for a 24 hour period so from so it doesn't matter how frequently you give the dose the AUC is often from time 0 to 24 hours so if you know if, if this drug was given once a day you would only have one of these over 24 hours also if this drug was given every 8 hours then you would have three of these peaks but regardless AUC is the area under the curve for a 24 hour period and of course you could get the level at any time between peak and trough and that would be considered a random level now when it comes to antibiotic these things only tell you how the body is handling the drug so so you know whether it's AUC or the peak or the trough it's basically telling you how much drug is left in the body at a specific time it doesn't necessarily tell you anything about the um, pharmacodynamics of the drug because it doesn't really tell you anything about the organism and we need to know something about the organism and what we need to know about the organism is the MIC or the minimum inhibitory co uh, concentration we can combine these pharmacokinetic parameters with MIC to get PKPD in indices so the three commonly used are the peak to MIC ratio the AUC to MIC ratio or the time above MIC. So when the concentration goes above this MIC concentration, it will go above and then eventually will go down and then go below the MIC. The time it takes to go above the MIC and then below the MIC, that's referred to as time above MIC. Bioavailability of aminoglycosides is negligible. Basically, less than 5% is absorbed. Therefore, majority of aminoglycosides are IV formulations. So the oral formulation are typically not available because not enough of it is absorbed for systemic infection. So when we do use oral aminoglycosides, because it is not absorbed, it's primarily for a GI purposes. For most patients, the volume of distribution of aminoglycosides are 0.25 liters per kilogram, and we will use these numbers when we get to the calculations portion of this topic. Aminoglycosides are 
primarily excreted renally and the half-life is about two hours in someone with normal renal function. However, in someone with renal impairment, the half-life could be between 50 to 70 hours. In this picture, on the horizontal axis, we're looking at time and the units of time are hour. And on the vertical axis, we're looking at the, in the log drop in the CFU or colony forming units of bacterial growth. So CFUs are basically units of measuring how much bacteria grow on culture. So in all three of these experiments, we have the control. So the red circles are control, meaning that if we don't use any antibiotics, we just let the organism uh, grow. So as time goes on, bacteria grow in the absence of antibiotics. Now the question is, if we start to introduce antibiotics, how much does it um, prevent growth of bacteria. MIC is the minimum inhibitory concentration of a specific antibiotic for a specific organism. So in these experiments, we're giving antibiotics in increasing concentration and see how much increasing the concentration affect the growth. So for example, on the left hand side, we're looking at the antibiotic tobramycin. So if we give a quarter of the MIC, as time goes on, you can see that the growth of bacteria slows down but doesn't completely uh, prohibit it. Now if we gave uh, exactly at MIC concentration, as you, you can see that as the time uh, goes on, bacteria start to die. So they actually the colony forming units start to drop. Now at higher concentration, so for example at 4 MICs, you can see that bacteria bacterial growth actually drops faster and as we increase the concentration this drop in growth of bacteria becomes uh, larger and larger this suggests that tobramycin has concentration dependent killing meaning that the more of a concentration of tobramycin that we use the more the growth of this organism was dropped now let's look at ciprofloxacin ciprofloxacin we uh, they did the same experiment so you can see that as they increase the concentration of ciprofloxacin more and more of the organism died as time went on. Now compare that to tacrocillin, which is a beta-lactam. Now as, it cre as they increase the concentration of this beta-lactam, you can see that the organism dropped, but at some point, increasing the concentration didn't make a difference anymore. So for example, once we, re we reach a concentration four times the MIC, we got the maximum amount of killing. So 16 times the MIC in negligible amounts. In fact, a concentration 24 times the MIC made no difference compared to 16 times MIC. And this suggests that beta-lactams do not have concentration dependent killing. Whereas tobramycin, which is an aminoglycoside, and ciprofloxacin, which is a fluoroquinolone, these two show concentration dependent killing because at the highest concentration of these antibiotics resulted in the most amount of killing. So generally speaking, antibiotics can be uh, divided into concentration dependent and concentration independent killing. Now we're looking at the evolution of um, PKPD. So as time went on, then clinicians started to refer to concentration dependent as time dependent. So we had concentration dependent and then we had time dependent. And as I showed you the examples of fluoroquinolones and aminoglycosides, those are concentration dependent. And then the time dependent would be the beta-lactams as well as vancomycin. And the PKPD parameter for uh, time dependent, specifically for beta-lactam, is the time above MIC. So it's not necessarily the concentration of beta-lactams, it's more of how long the concentration is above the MIC that would result in maximum killing of organisms. Now compare that to concentration dependent. So if you have a high concentration, uh, uh, you know, the ratio of uh, uh, peak concentration to MIC, the higher this concentration will result to the maximum amount of killing. And then there's the concept of AUC or area under the curve to MIC ratio which is uh, used for uh, aminoglycoside and fluoroquinolones, which I will explain more. But this AUC to MIC is also used for vancomycin. So generally speaking, peak to MIC ratio is used for concentration dependent, and time above MIC is used for time dependent. 
And then AUC to MIC, it just depends. For some antibiotics, AUC to MIC means concentration dependent. And for some antibiotics, such as vancomycin, it just means time dependent. In this picture, we're looking at the concentration time curve. So on the horizontal axis, we're looking at time. And on the vertical axis, we're looking at concentration. The time above MIC, which is used for time dependent antibiotics, primarily beta lactams, uh, is the pharmacodynamic parameters for beta lactams. And we like to target the time above MIC of 40 to 60% of the dosing interval. Now, the ratio of peak to MIC is used for concentration dependent antibiotics such as aminoglycoside. So, our goal is to have a peak to MIC to be 8 to 10 times the MIC. So you we want the peak to be 8 to 10 times the MIC. So if the MIC happens to be 1, we want the peak to be uh, 8 to 10. So 10, for example. Whereas if the MIC happens to be 2, then you want the peak to be 20. So 10 times 2 would be 20. And then we have the concept of AUC to MIC, which we will talk about more when we talk about vancomycin. And AUC to MIC is primarily used for vancomycin as that's basically the area under the curve. So this whole, so it would be all of this area. This would be the AUC. Now, another thing that's specific for aminoglycoside is that is the concept of um, post antibiotic effect. Post antibiotic effect means that when the concentration went above the MIC, the antibiotic starts to kill. And then once the concentration goes below the MIC, the antibody continues to kill for some period of time. So as you can see from here to here, the aminoglycoside continues to kill. And that's referred to post antibiotic effect. Now here are some uh, PKPD targets for um, commonly used antibiotics. So for aminoglycosides, the best PKPD target is AUC to MIC, specifically for non-critically ill patients is 30 to 50, and for critically uh, ill patients is 80 to 100. However, doing AUC to MIC at bedside is not practical, so most clinicians actually do the peak to MIC because you can easily get the peak level, and once you have the MIC, you can actually see if it's 10 times uh, the MIC. So for the purpose of this class, we're going to do the peak to MIC uh, for our monitoring of aminoglycosides. And we have another day dedicated to vancomycin calculations, which we will discuss at that time.